Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Njabu for those who don't know and I have a fresh prophetic word that I want to share with you all today. And before we get into this word, I do just want to let those know who maybe don't know that the Lord has called me into a season of life coaching. So if you are in the market for a faith-based life coach, then go ahead and check out my information in the description and book a call. And I wanted to announce that in the beginning of the video for a change instead of in the end. Okay, so this word is called get in position. God's warning to Christian leaders and believers. So it is a two part word. And so what the Lord has been revealing to me is that there are leaders and believers who are not honoring their responsibility to the body of Christ. They're not making the contributions that they are called to make in support of the body of believers in general. So whether you are a leader or believer all of us have responsibilities to the church itself, right? So when it comes to believers, the Lord has given me wisdom and correction to share. And then when it comes to leaders, the Lord gave me prophetic dreams and a warning. So if you want to skip the first part, if you're just a leader who's just interested in what the Lord is saying concerning leaders who aren't honoring their responsibilities and not on their post, then go ahead and skip to this timestamp that I'll put on the screen and you can go right to what it is that applies to you. But I'm going to start first and foremost with what the Lord has been highlighting to the believers, okay? So there are people in the faith who aren't contributing enough to the body of believers, and that is indirectly contributing to the sad state that the church is in right now, okay? We complain a lot of the time about how so many Christians are so ignorant of the Bible, so many believers are getting hijacked by false doctrine, getting caught up in new age, leaving the faith, just generally lacking revelation. But if we aren't operating in the roles that God has called us to as people of faith, then we are partly to blame, okay? So there are people who aren't in position and because their post is not part of the fivefold ministry, they think that that makes it okay that they aren't actively doing something to build the kingdom of God. And that is not the case, okay? Our responsibility is to help build the kingdom and help build up other believers right we're not called to just walk this walk as private christians you know we're not called to only be focused on our own lives and our own christian walk that is not enough and that is also not biblical if you look at the book of acts the early christians were living a very communal lifestyle right they were community focused community minded we are not called to be private christians who are only bothered with what's going on with ourselves and those that we care about at the end of the day there's too much need need out here and too few people who are doing something about it. There's a need for godly mentorship and discipleship. There's a need for encouragement and support in the body of Christ. There are people in the body of Christ who need financial help. There are people who need counseling. There are people who need accountability partners in Christ, who need someone who's gonna lay hands on them and pray for their healing. There are many, many people in the body of Christ who just need somebody to talk to, okay? So some of these needs are needs that you can actually fill in your own small way, in your community, in your part of the world in the pocket that you're in right but you're not willing to allow yourself to be used and you're not holding yourself accountable to the fact that we as Christians are called to be givers and not just takers okay you're ignoring the responsibility to be an active giver in the body of Christ or you're just putting it off to a later date telling yourself you'll get around to it but that is the reason why the work is plenty and the workers are few. That was true in the time of Christ and that is true even now. The work is plenty and the workers are few. And that is never going to change if more people don't get up and get in position. So you get in position by starting to labor for the kingdom according to the strengths and the graces that you have been given, okay? So you need to be proactive, guys. There are a lot of people who, if we can be honest with ourselves, they don't do more for the body of Christ because they are making excuses and they don't want to be proactive. You sitting around and waiting 
for the Holy Spirit to tell you what to do to help people. In many cases, it's just an excuse that you're making to not help people, okay? Don't necessarily think that the Lord is going to come to you and say, listen, you need to be doing this, this, and that in order to serve me and in order to serve people. No, the Bible already makes it very clear that you're supposed to serve. So if you don't want to take the initiative to help in some way, a lot of the time that is a heart issue, okay? Because the Holy Spirit naturally, he will incline you, he will nudge you to be of service in some way because he is the advocate and he is the helper. His nature is to help. So when you have the Holy Spirit, he's going to be nudging you to help. And if you don't feel that nudge, then maybe you have ignored it so long that you've suppressed it, okay? So for believers in general, don't use the fact that you maybe aren't called to formal ministry or the fivefold ministry as an excuse to neglect the responsibility that you have to feed God's sheep. Feeding the sheep looks different for different people, but everyone has something that they can contribute, okay? Romans 12, 5 to 8 says, So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Okay, so here we can see that there are many, many ways to add to the body of Christ, but add is the key word, okay? And I do want to say, guys, also another excuse that people make is that they tell themselves that because they are going through a hard time, then that absolves them of the responsibility to give. There are always people who are doing worse than you. A lot of people in the body of Christ don't understand that giving is spiritual. You give on principle and you do it in the way that you're able to do it regardless of what season of life you're in. I am in one of the hardest seasons of my life and have been for the last eight months. And yet over the last eight months, I have given to the poor more times than I can count. Given to my apostle, given to people who have released prophetic words that have been helpful to me and helped guide me in my season and my development process, right? Because I understand that on principle, I am called to be unselfish. So how crazy would I look out here not being willing to sow $12 into my apostle who's probably released 12 dozen words that have helped me in my process the last couple of years. You understand me? There are many people in the body of Christ who are benefiting from the labor of the doers in the body of Christ but not being willing to become doers themselves. But what use is a body part that contributes nothing, okay? What use is a body part that adds nothing to the other parts? Imagine if your hands one day woke up and were like, you know what? I've got a lot going on. You know, I'm in a tough season in my life, so I'm just going to focus on me. You know, these hands are just going to focus on washing themselves, and I've just got to look out for myself. So the face can figure out how to wash itself. The nose can figure out how to blow itself. I'm going to pray for the nose. I'll pray for the nose that the Lord blows it, but I'm not going to lift a finger to blow that nose. I'll pray for those ears that the Lord cleans them, but I'm not going to lift a finger to clean those ears. It's such a crazy mentality, right? But that is actually the standard. In this day and age in the body of believers it's literally like those people who are walking past homeless people and they say god bless you i hope your situation changes but what have you done to actually help that situation change this mentality of uh, it's not really my problem is exactly what the lord is talking about in james 2 15 to 17 which says suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food if one of you says to them go in peace keep warm and well fed but does nothing about their physical needs what good is it in the same way faith by itself if it's not accompanied with action is dead okay so faith without action is dead you demonstrate your faith you demonstrate your goodwill you demonstrate your heart to support and build the kingdom of God with your actions. Your prayers are great, but you can do more. Your thoughts and good wishes are great, but for many of you, you can do more. That is how you build the kingdom of God, by being an active member in the body who lets God use you in tangible ways. Romans 12, 11 says, do not be slothful 
meaning do not be lazy, but get about the business of eagerly serving the Lord. And how we serve is by tending to the sheep. There is always somebody who is in a worse situation than you are. There is always somebody who is further from the Lord than you are. There is always somebody who is spiritually weaker than you, who knows their Bible less than you do, and who could use your help. And to that person, if you're willing to step out and help, you could be an answered prayer and you could also be a breath of fresh air. So you need to ask yourself over the last two, three months, reflect on the last two, three months of your life. Have you been moving through the world like somebody who just says, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Or have you actually chosen to be a blessing? Okay, so the Lord is calling people in the body of Christ. The Lord is calling the church to get in position and to start taking initiative to build the kingdom of God through their actions and not just through our words. Now, on to what the Lord is saying to leadership. So this portion of the word is for people who are neglecting the sheep that the Lord has already called to them and people who are neglecting the sheep that God desires for them to serve. OK, so you are either neglecting the sheep that you've already been given or because you are not ac accepting the responsibility that the Lord desires you to step into. You are indirectly neglecting the people that God would actually like to use you to help. So God has specifically been emphasizing the fact that his sheep are starving because because the leaders aren't prioritizing or caring for them the way that they should. Let me say the way that we should, because I'm also in a leadership position, even on this platform, right? So because of that, the sheep are being forgotten about while the leaders are distracted and busy with other things. And the consequence of that is that, number one, the sheep have become starved for the word of God and the move of God. And number two, the sheep are now unguarded and left vulnerable to the enemy. So one of the ways that this, the Lord was speaking to me about this was through a dream, multiple dreams, but I'll highlight one dream where in that dream, a person who represents the church was sitting on the couch and talking on the phone while all the baby believers that they were supposed to be watching over went unfed. And eventually they got snatched up by a predatory animal. A predatory animal literally just came in and started ripping the baby believers apart. So this speaks to the baby Christians that the Lord desires to be protected and taken out of the wild, right? Taken out of the wild in the sense of being ushered out of the world, right? The Lord wants them to be protected by being ushered out of the world. And there are also new believers as well that the Lord wants to bring into the fold during the times to come as part of his harvest of souls. Okay, so these are baby Christians and new believers that the Lord is concerned about in this time. He's concerned about their vulnerability. They still don't have the knowledge they need in order to keep themselves out of deception. So they still have a measure of ignorance that they haven't fully come out of. And that makes them a prime target for the enemy to snatch them up with false doctrine, snatch them up by leading them to false teachers and false prophets, or even just steer them into dead churches that don't preach the full gospel or even snatch them up with a religious spirit, right? So that they never experience the fullness of what it is that God can do in their lives. People are so desperate to receive from the Lord and that need is very easily exploited when the people who were actually called by God to be leaders are not on their job. And that is why the Lord was highlighting that his children are so hungry that they will literally eat anything. In one of the dreams God gave me, I literally saw an animal eating something that is completely unnatural for it to eat because that's how desperate it was for food. That's how long it had been waiting, you know, to be nourished. If you're sitting there knowing that you're called to evangelize, knowing that you're called to pastor, knowing that you're called to teach and you're not doing it, but you're still thinking that the sorry state of the church has nothing to do with you, you are fooling yourself, okay? There are people that are called to you specifically, meaning people who, according to the perfect will of God, were meant to be fed, not just by somebody, but specifically by you. Even with me and my small platform, I've had subscribers 
subscribers tell me that the Holy Spirit is the one who led me to you. I've even had a young woman tell me that the Lord told her in this particular season of her life to literally listen to just me and one other person. And that's not because I'm the only person on you know YouTube who's authentically in Christ or I'm the only person who, you know what I'm saying? It's not because I have any kind of superiority over any other leader. It's because for that particular person, there's something that the Lord has in me that he wants to use to help cultivate them. God uses our unique qualities to fish for specific individuals. He knows when his sheep needs the kind of leader who has this kind of personality, this kind of mentality, this kind of testimony, right? He knows what bait to use to catch which fish. So everything about you that makes you unique is something that God can use to minister to specific people and appeal to them in a way that other leaders might not, okay? So when you're not on your post, or you're doing it halfway and you're taking a bare minimum approach, there are people who God called to you that you aren't helping. It's one thing to be off your post because God is still developing you and because you're not ready to be launched yet, that's perfectly fine. In fact, that's respectable to not launch yourself before you know that you're ready and before, or before the Lord has confirmed that you're ready. But it's another thing to be running away from the calling or running away from a certain position because you don't want the responsibility that's involved or because you don't want the inconvenience that comes with it. And I say that as somebody who understands to some degree, you know, what it takes right to be feeding the sheep it's not easy at all it is very very difficult um there's a lot of entitlement in the body of christ there are a lot of people who they call themselves christians and they think they follow god but they're very entitled they're the ones who are expecting their leadership to do everything for them be their mother their father their cousin their neighbor their counselor their coach their you know be be their everything putting these un unreasonable demands on you expecting you to basically be their servant whatever it is there's so much entitlement yes there is there's so many problematic things that go on when you're somebody who's called to be in a position of service but the lord does help you find balance the lord does help you develop boundaries and that kind of thing along the way if you allow the holy spirit to lead you sometimes he'll be the one convicting you the lord certainly did that with me but he was like you, he was showing me that I was, I'm too responsive. I, I, I took on so much responsibility that it was the Lord himself who told me that not everything needs a response and you need to conserve your energy and pull away, okay? So the Lord himself will guide you so that you don't get burnt out and so that you're able to serve other people without allowing people who have no boundaries or the wrong intentions to run you down. The Lord is not calling you into this position so that it can destroy you, okay? He will preserve you in the midst of it. So if you know that you've been called to be a leader in the faith and you reject the calling understand that it might look like you're just rejecting the calling but truly beneath that what you're rejecting is the request from the lord to help feed his sheep and i want you to take a moment and just flip that around and ask yourself what if the people who have poured into your life in your process what if the men and the women of god who have helped steer you encourage you build you up guide you in your process what if every single one of them had rejected their calling where would you be now and even though yes god can always use somebody else and make that person good enough for the job that doesn't change the fact that there are so many people who are suffering in the body of christ right now and just need basic help from someone who's more mature in the faith I get so many emails from people who will mention the fact that they literally don't have anybody else to talk to. There are people who need deliverance, who need prayer, who need a shoulder to cry on, who need wise counsel from somebody that is more senior in the things of God. There are people who just need somebody solid to bounce an idea off of and to say, hey, you know, I know you're more mature in the faith. Am I hearing the Lord clearly or am I way off base here? And you could make a world of difference to the people who have none of these things, but you refuse to take your position or you started and then you stopped right you put your hand to the plow and then you walked away so the lord is saying get in position and get back on your post and again for those who maybe walked away from their position or walked away from helping people walked away from their post due to burnout or due to being taken advantage of ask god to heal you emotionally and spiritually then ask god how to help you change your approach and how to change the way that you move and teach how to protect yourself okay he can help you develop those strategies that will insulate you from those people who are taking advantage 
from those people who don't have the best intentions, from those people who are moving in a spirit of entitlement. He can do it for you. I used to be a people pleaser, even up until the point that I entered the prophetic, and the Lord did it for me. He taught me how to protect myself better, okay? And now I'm better for it. And that helps me to do this work. So that is it for the word of the Lord. The Lord has been calling people to take their rightful positions and become active and contributing members in the body of Christ. If you know that you're called to lead a leadership position and you walked away, it's okay. Um, repent because the Lord desires to use you. If he didn't, you would not have been called in the first place and you would not be walking in those gifts that you have. The gifts are the evidence of the fact that the Lord wants to use you. The Lord isn't out here just throwing out gifts for no reason, okay? So that is it for me. And again, for those who don't know, the Lord has called me into life coaching. So if you're in the market for a life coach, then go ahead and check out my information in the description. If you are dealing with people pleasing, chronic people pleasing, and you know that you're called to be a person of authority, a person in a leadership position, then get at me because I'll help walk you through that as well in the name of Jesus. So yes, God bless you all. See you next time. And until then, keep the faith.